What it is, what it do, what's good with you? It's your boy Ray Draconis. Today is May the 14th, 2020, and coming at you from the city beautiful in the center of the sunshine state where souls burn brighter. It's the Florida Caliber Podcast. On this week's edition of the podcast, we're going to recap events that took place from June 5th to June 11th. Then, of course, we're going to put you up on the events to come for the next yeah, couple of weeks, month or so. But off top, first off, I got to give a big shout out to my man, Zerk, for allowing us to use his song FGC from his Game Life EP. Check that out. Check the entire song and the rest of the EP. Go to SoundCloud.com slash The Zerk. It's T-H-E-E-Z-E-R-K. As always, if you appreciate anybody that's checking us out live, what's up, Geralt's Bathwater? Shout out to you. Appreciate you coming by. Go ahead and hit that follow button if you're new here so you can get notified anytime we go live. If you're watching us later on YouTube, go ahead and hit that subscribe button so you know every time we drop a new video for a new week. And if you're listening on the traditional audio podcast, you know, go ahead and subscribe via your favorite podcast app, whether that's Apple, Spotify, Google Podcasts, whichever one it is. Florida Caliber, FLCaliberPod.com have all the links for you on that. And then, as always, you see it's on the social medias. Go ahead and, you know, give us a like, retweet, share, get the word out, because the more people know what we're doing around here, the more, the better it is for us and the Soul Caliber community. We can get everybody a little bit more exposure as we keep, you know, trying to rep and spread love for the game that we all enjoy. Without any further ado, let's get to it. Now, as I said at the top, we're going to be going over events that took place from June 5th to June 11th. And with that, we're going to start off with 44 Fridays online taking place on Friday, June the 5th. This one had 19 entrants competing over a Maturino of $466.68. So with that, we're going to jump right to the winner's finals. We would have Asianic playing Nightmare versus MTL MGC's Mind Wolf playing Keelik. Let's check out how. Let's see which one of these two will be the first to punch their ticket to grand finals and which one would have to fight their way through losers. But he does have a bar meter and we've wow. seen crazier comebacks. He's on game point right now though. No meter, but uh, he doesn't care. He's disrespectful. Oh, talk about disrespect. Lots of damage. Lost you again, you will. You try to move. You try to resurrect you. Last hope. Drill. Three A gets poked out by three K. Wow. And Asiana gets sent to losers by Mind Wolf. There you have it, Asianic down to losers. Mind Wolf moving on to the grand finals. Let's see who he would have, who would be meeting him in the grand finals. As we round out the top four, loser semifinals, we would have Revan versus Jack Salian. Revan starting off with Grow. Jack Salian, of course, playing his trademark as well. <laughs> Pretty much. Girls back for this all Keelik players have the suffix wolf and it seems it, it seems so. There's a good uh brilliant observation there. <laughs> Revan starting off with Grow, he would switch to Geralt in game two. Now this one would come down to the final game, final final round. Which one of these two would be going up against Asianic in the losers finals? And a double or easy situation, God saying it might choke right here. And starting off with a good life lead. Will Revan avenge Wednesday night fights in California? He is so trying to get hit by an axe. Lots of plus frames, not a lot Geralt can do. Each the... Ouch! Oh. oh, bad guess. Oh! 1A, 1A. And oh, no! Oh, not over okay. Yet. Hold up, hold up. It is definitely over. Oh, Here's yes. full crush 1A. 
Wow, yeah, just like that. God Salmon just does not care. He got his damage early and was able to sit back and let his opponent come to him. Jack Salian prevailing in this matchup, going on to Losers Finals. Revan, we'll catch you next time. Now, in the Losers Finals, Azionic playing his Nightmare versus Jack Salian playing as well. I don't know if they've played before this matchup or how much they've played before this matchup. But let's see which one of them would come out on top. Let's check it out. We got the lethal hit primes. We got no meter, but man. We one round away to finish the Oceanic. Oh god. God. Mm -hmm. Huge damage. Oh, that's it. It's the mix. He still that's has a terror it. charge. Anything can happen. Yeah, but he has no meter. Oh, what? There's there's more. There's not more. AGA. Oh. Yeah. Uh, probably dead. Yep. Just to make wow. sure. Texas power. Wow, oh, man. Shout out to AC Iron, but he doesn't bring the Wednesday night fight bell back to California. Man. And just like that, Jack Salian with the whiff punish CE to take the losers finals match and proceed on to grand finals where we would have waiting for him MTL MGC Mind Wolf. Of course, with his key lick, Jack Salian sticking with the as well. This would actually be a run back from the winner's quarterfinals where Mind Wolf won 2 0. Would Jack Salian get his revenge in this match or would history repeat itself? Let us see. You can hit my feet all you want. All you want. It's free. Good step. We'll crouch 3B. Doesn't hit grounded though. Wow. The really gimmicky low off the ground. Exactly. He just doesn't block his toes. Oh, almost. Oh, oh plane smash. Goodness. Oh, too high. Ah! Oh. It's punish. Beautiful punish. It is. Beautiful. Big damage. One mix up takes this. Yeah, it's looking not so looking good. He don't that. block his toes. Two A plus B. Two A plus B. Two A plus B. Oh, Ooh, there it is. Wow. Yeah, four four Mine B two. takes it clean. Three one over. And there you have it, the comeback courtesy of that soul charge CE by Keelik. That thing, what that does, damn near a hundred damage. Took a big chunk of life. And then the low to clutch out the win to take four for Fridays. So to recap those final standings, the top four. First place, we got MTL, MGC, Mind Wolf. Second place, Jack Salian. Third place, Asianic. And in fourth, Revan. Shout out to the commentators in this one. We got Decree18 on Twitter at Decree18. Yugo on Twitter at YugoATL. And Less Than Lee on Twitter at Less underscore Dan underscore Lee. We have links to their Discord and the Smash GG for the entire bracket. You can catch the stream on Twitch at twitch.tv slash Mikosu. Next up, probably the biggest tournament of the weekend, Friday, May 5th, uh, Friday, June 5th, I'm sorry. Bud Light Beer League, Soul Calibur East number two, Taking place online on the PC in the East U.S. Of course, this is a bi-weekly for each region. Competing over a prize pool of $1,000. First place getting $500. Second place getting $300. And third place getting $200. And the top 12 winners would earn points towards qualifying for the regional round robin. Where they would have a chance at an even bigger prize pot. First place of that round robin earning $1,250. Second place getting $625, third place $375, and fourth place $250. Now, this was split up into two pools, had 55 entrants this week, split up into two pools, the two winners and two losers from each pool proceeding on to the top five. In pool one, we would have 
on the winner's side, Woes and BWV Link Wars. And on the loser's side, Icy Chains and Omega XCN. Woes would go 6-1 and one with three wins, defeating SRK Woo Cash, Carbon Clive, and Rids to make the top eight. Link Wars would ha- get four wins going 6-0 and oh with a DQ, defeating Enkindu, The Hookers Xander, Omega XEN, and Icy Chains. Now, Icy Chains would also get three wins going 6-3. and three. He was sent down by Link Wars, as we previously heard, in the winner semifinals. But defeated Baron, who that, and then Baron again. <laughs> it feels bad, man. Getting beat two times in the same tournament by the same person. Before top eight. Ooh. And then Omega XEN have probably the longest road, getting five wins, going eight and three with a DQ. He was also defeated by Link Wars in the winner's quarterfinals, but he would defeat Scavenger, Kashi, 5F, Tiz, who that, and Rids. Now for pool two, on the winner's side, we would have the Hookers Stellar and Grandma's Got Game. On the loser side, we would have Accelerate Gaming's Rich Sticks and JJJ. Now Stellar would go for, would get four wins going eight and one. On his way, he would defeat FGC Fight Club's Kazui, the Hookers Vesper. Ooh, hate to knock out your teammate like that, but uh, you know, sometimes you gotta do it. Accelerate Gaming's Rich Sticks and JJJ. Grandma's Got Game would have a slightly shorter path, getting three wins, going six and one. He would defeat Burgle, Luminaries Cry Wolf, and Luminaries Ronda Tryhard. Now, on the loser side, Rich Sticks, he would get four wins, going eight and two. He was sent the losers by the Hooker Stellar, as mentioned earlier, in the winners' quarterfinals, but he would defeat Team Deus's Enders J, Yen Crescent, Luminary Spectre Child, and Luminaries Ronda Tryhard. Ooh, Luminary, Team Luminary just getting defeated just shy of top eight this time. I don't think we had any of them in the top eight. And then J- JJJ would go four wins, nine and three, also defeated by Stellar in the winner's semifinals. He would be defeated by TTDF Gear Falcon, Boom, Luminary Spectre Child, and Team Deus's Enders J. Yes, Girls Bathwater po- points out that... uh. Stellar was a surprise was such a surprise in this tournament and he was haven't seen his name much around in the online tournament scene during this uh during the pandemic so for him to come out in the Bud Light Beer League and you know really run over and make his way through the top to the top eight like he did was really uh something to behold and with that we're gonna go to the top eight on the winner's side winner's semifinals have start off with the hookers stellar playing nightmare versus grandma's got game playing talum let's see which of these two will be the first to advance to the winners finals in the bud light beer leagues east number two gets chopped in the head stellar at match point that's right but the, that wall is gone now so he's got a very oh huge oh boy how much damage look at that that was like a third life right there already of course, oh, he just went for it immediately. Try to go for a throw, nice crouch under there. But we're gonna activate the soul charge. Get off of me, and here we go. Oh boy, oh, that's it. That's gonna do it right there. This is so much damage. Oh my god. Beautiful by Stellar, man. What a killer. Sorry about that video stopping. It was still going on my side. I didn't even notice that it stopped on the stream. Hmm. I wonder what that's about. But Stellar triumphing over Grandma's Got Game. Two games to zero to advance to the winner's finals. Grandma's Got Game going down to the losers. He would have a bit further to go if he would hope to make it to the grand finals. In our other winner semifinals match, we would have Woes versus BWV Linkors. Woes and Linkors, of course. Ah, yes, we well, we did have Woes versus BWV Linkors, but they wouldn't actually get to play. Uh, I think it would be best to just let the commentators go ahead and explain what happened at this point in the tournament. I have to face the first round losers, which is Icy Chains, uh, but you know, I want to see what he's going to do. 
Oh, uh, sorry. So, uh, which player was that? Oh, so I. I <laughs> <laughs> okay, no, I'm more mind blown about the age. <laughs> I, I'm so sad, guys, that I have to report this news to you guys. But I, I guess as an East Coast representative, I'm sorry, James. I have to be the one to bring you guys the news. So, guys, the, the Linkor is, is not <laughs> he's not 21, which I, I knew he was young, but I didn't even realize. I thought he was like, oh, geez, God, we lost James, guys. I'm sorry. So Link Link is, is not 21. And unfortunately, to enter the Bud Light Beer League, you have to be 21 or older. So unfortunately, uh, we must we must disqualify you, Link. I'm sorry, Link. Uh, but, you know, uh, see you, see you when you're 21, I guess. Uh, happy birthday. When that happens, I'll buy you a gift. I have to face the first round. Of so there you have it. Uh, Woes winning by DQ over Link Ors, who not quite 21. I hear his birthday was is going to be just after the end of the Bud Light Beer Leagues, which, which sucks. It's under... It's understandable, yet it's not at the same time just due to the circumstances and the laws in the U.S. and all of that good stuff. But bottom line is the rules of the Bud Light Beer League said that you had to be 21. He's not yet 21, so it is what it is. Woes advancing via DQ to the winner's finals. Now, over to the loser side to round out the top eight. We're going to start off with losers round one. Omega XCN playing Taki versus Icy Chains and his grow. Which of these two would be continuing their tournament run? Which of these two would be taking a seat? There. Oh, not there you go. There's that point blank sidestep again. You see how fast it just gets to the other side. Yeah, the, 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 the intrude sidesteps are so crazy. And when you don't expect them, it's the worst because it's a free back tech combo for them. Or back turn combo, I should say. Nice soul charge. Yeah. Yep. Oh, he got so much damage from the yes, soul attack. And I'm not sure. Did that miss? Because yes, of it, did, it did miss that thing. Yeah, but I, I was just the wall kind of messed it up, it looked like. Nice chase down. Keeping oh the pressure my going. God. Not, is it? No way. A get up kick. Stand up kick. And there you go. Icy Chains is going to take it 2 to 0. There. Oh. I see change the man who refuses to be conditioned. Triumph is over Omega XCN two games to zero. He would proceed on Omega XCN would be sitting on the sidelines like the rest of us watching the tournament go by. Now for the other losers round one match we would have JJJ playing Amy versus Rich Sticks playing Maxi. This one would go down to the final game, final, final round. Which one of these two seasoned competitors would come out on top? Oh, oh my God. God. yes. Oh, oh. His RIs are ridiculous this set. My goodness. He had that, and that, again, you know, is one of the strengths that match. Oh, that's a whip punish with the C. Huge damage. Oh, and you know, he canceled it to go for the, the, the manual combo afterwards. Mm -hmm. Oh, but here comes JJJ. Oh, that was, nice. That was sick. Yeah. I'm surprised it didn't work on the first hit, but he still got clipped at the end. Oh, he nice went for throw. the reset instead. He went for the throw. Mm -hmm. Oh, nice fake on the unblockable. There's a good block on the mid right there, but here comes JJJ. Here comes JJJ. He's been oh, able to kiss the launch. No. Oh, nice break. The They're going crazy. So charge, so charge, so charge. He didn't now, do it. All of a sudden, the light. Oh. All right. <laughs> oh, that Come was so on. crazy. What a match. Heaven's Guard to set up the win for Rich Sticks as he triumphs two games to one over JJJ. JJJ, I guess we'll see you back in the commentary booth at the next tournament. Rich Sticks proceeding on to the losers' quarterfinals, but not quite yet. Grandma's got game first in the losers' quarterfinals. Grandma's got game playing, starting off with Amy versus Icy Chains and his grow. Grandma's got game would actually switch to Talum in game two. I don't think I got my uh, scores right here, but either way, yes, Grandma's got game versus Icy Chains. 
let's see how this one ended up. Maybe he didn't play Amy. Maybe he was just Talim all the way through. I have to go and double check that. Either way, let's see how this ended. Grandma's got game, Icy Chains. Grandma's got game, taking out this uh, grow soul charge. Yeah, he's, he's taking away a lot of the good mix from Icy Chains. Icy Chains is going to have to rethink his approach during that. Mm. And he doesn't have a lot of time to think about it because he's getting rushed down. Yeah, this could be it right here. If Grandma's got game, takes this. He's even stopped. He, he even hasn't been doing the things that he was doing earlier, like that mid high string that he was good about ducking before. He's kind of just letting it happen. You saw Take right there, tried to go game. into the Avenger stance. Grandma's got game, knew that that was. Oh, he already oh, no. and then he was ready for the counter GI. That's too much. That's too much. That was he, ridiculous. He was ready for him trying to go into the Avenger stance and counter that. And there you have it. Grandma's got game with the call out to clutch to win with the no round brown and proceed on to the next round of the tournament now we did get confirmation that he did play amy but i was confused because he won 2-0 so how did he switch from amy to talim if he never lost so that's why i was confused i didn't know if it was a different round or but either way this round he did in fact win two games to zero with the no round brown over icy chains now, the next match would have been Link Ors and Rich Sticks. But as we talked about earlier, Rich, uh, Link Ors was DQ'd. So Rich Sticks would get the free ride to the next round. We would see him back in losers semifinals. But before we get there, back up to the winner's side. We would have in the winner's finals, Woes versus the Hookers, Stellar. Woes starting off with Taki, Stellar sticking with Nightmare. Woz would switch to his Raphael in game two. This would go down to the final game. Let's see which of these two would be the first to punch their ticket to grand finals. All right, Woz now one round away. Match point. Match point. Look at that movement to both players. Oh, caught him oh, out of the air of the AK. One. Good stuff. Oh, here nice. we go. Okay, has the terror charge on. They spent it immediately, though. Again? Again, give me another one. I need this. Oh, look at this pressure there. Oh, 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 counter hit. Damage. Counter hit. This is that big damage. And then we got a nice free mix. Soul charge. He didn't want to take the 50-50. Yeah. Stellar's got a lot of life. Uh, got a lot of meter though. Got a lot of stuff to work with at this point. Oh, got him with the low option off of it. Plus. Oh, that's a lot Ow, of damage. Man, he actually can take this. Whoa, he got the crush. That's it's gonna enough. Do it's it. enough. Yes, the guard break. At the most un at the inopportune time for Stellar. There you go. Woes coming back in that round to take it three games to two over Stellar. Woes, we would see you in grand finals, Stellar. We'll see if you can make your way back and earn that run back. Back down to the loser side, though. Loser semifinals, Grandma's Got Game playing Talon versus Accelerate Gaming's Rich Sticks playing Maxi. Let's see which of these two will pursue, proceed on to the loser's finals. Who would win the $200 money match? Because, of course, the winner of this. Perhaps Grandma's Got Game knows his opponent and knows that Rich Sticks is really strong against his Talon, and that's why he opted to go with that in the first round. Nice. Got that counter poke right in there. It's back to the wall. Gameplay of, of Grandma's Got Game is looking really good, though. Ari oh. didn't work the break attack. At least he didn't get broken by that. That would have been a huge problem. Uh, looked like he tried to maybe cancel it, get out of there, but got caught out of the middle of that cancel. He tried to tech crouch under something. Good movement, but no whip punish. He's got to play a little more passively because he can't risk too many rounds. No whip punish. He doesn't have meter for a, a CE or a soul charge or anything either, and the throw is good. Now one more hit. Went for the mid. Now the low. That's plus. Uh, yeah, and then just got kicked. Tried to jump. Probably was expecting a low hit. Perhaps grandma. Check your ankles. Check your face. Rich sticks over grandma's got game. Proceeding on to the losers finals. Uh, like I said, he won the $200 money match because, of course, top three get paid out. 
Grandma's Got Game sitting just outside of that. So, on to the Losers Finals. Accelerate Gaming's Rich Sticks versus the Hooker's Stellar. We'd actually see a bit of adaptation here from Rich Sticks. This being a run back from the winner's quarterfinals where Stellar sent Rich Sticks to losers by winning two games to zero. Rich Sticks would actually start off with Grow while against Stellar's Nightmare and then switch to Aswell in game two. Let's see if that would be enough for him to get his revenge in this tournament. Uh, he was still in the axe stance that whole entire time, so just, it's so scary because you know that weapon art can come from at any time. Wow, the run up 3B. Break dancing! Had the disco dancing, I love that one. <laughs> Why does this guy know how to break dance? It's just so weird. Learned, learned all the human technology. <laughs> Watch your feet. Hmm. Rich sticks with a huge lead now. He's gonna go for his his mirror. Yeah, I would definitely also. I don't do think he's been able to, to activate a new weapon stance. Oh well, he's gonna get it off of this. Yeah, let's see what he's got. Okay. He uses the nice. stand axe and gets Rich the launch. Sticks. Gets the kill and Rich sticks has set up a rematch of grand finals Man. between himself. And woes. And there you have it. The run back in grand finals. Woes playing Raphael versus Accelerate Gaming's Rich Sticks playing Maxi. This is the run back from their first Bud Light Beer League's week one grand finals. Where Woes won. He won the he came it was a opposite situation. Woes was on the loser's side. Rich Sticks on the winner's side. Woes resetting the bracket and then coming back to win it. Let's see if Rich Sticks could return the favor. Wow. Uh, Everything about that was ridiculous. You no, know he had that plan from the beginning right there. Oh, so never mind. We went from a position right there where, you know, it was about to be over completely. He had three yeah. three tournament points. And now Rich Dix has brought it right back. Last game, last round for this set. Oh, oh he, tried to step, yeah, he tried to step left, and that didn't work either. That move is just... Oh, he got oh it. That's no! Right oh. He's alive! Oh, my God. Oh, he still doesn't he, have a soul I'm charge. I'm not going anywhere near that edge. Oh, no. Oh, Runs up for the low the kick. The run up low kick from Wolves. The little toe kick. Is gonna Man. end it for Woes. He is your back to back East Coast Bud Light Beer League champion. And there you have it. Woes with the Roth is just too strong for Rich Sticks Maxi, it seems. As he takes the second week in a row for Bud Light Beer League's East Regionals. So to recap those final standings, top eight. First place, we got Woes earning 100 points and $500. Second place, Accelerate Gaming's Rich Sticks earning 70 points and $300. The Hooker's Stellar earning 45 points and $200. Grandma's Got Gaming fourth earning 25 points. Tied for fifth place, Icy Chains and BWV Linkors with 10 points. And tied for seventh, Omega XCN and JJJ each earning five points. Shout out to the commentators, James Chen at J Chinzor on Twitter and Spooky at Team Spooky on Twitter. I have links to their Smash GG so you can check out the entire bracket. And of course, to check the replay, you can go to twitch.tv slash Bud Light. Moving on to Saturday, June 6th, we have Locked in Your Character number four. It's taking place online on the PS4 in the UK and the EU. We would have 16 entrants this month competing or this week competing over a Macherino of $85, just enough for us to break down the top four. So we're going to jump to the winner's finals where we would have Mydros playing Ivy versus Fanley Jr. playing Maxi. Let's see which of these two competitors will come out on top in the winner's finals of this tournament. And uh, stabs the floor to get him. Now 2-2, two -two. Mydros trying to get back into this one. Ma 
finally had the resource advantage. Oh. Speaking of resources, there's that 4 4 B leaf will hit the game and just just enough bar. Just one or two bars. Nice 2 2 B. Yeah. So, okay. Ooh. Oh, he wanted CS. He wanted the CS, but he was yeah. denied. Oh, this could be a whip. <sighs> but this is looking like a dangerous game for Mydros as he looks to survive. But he's just chipping away, and Fan Lee is going to punish him. Yeah. Do you know what? That was a good play from the 214B, but uh, hold, holding that 214B into stance. Kind of yeah. Seal the and there you have it. Fan Lee Jr. inching him out with that deceptionally long maxi range to proceed on to the grand finals. Myros would have to fight his way up the loser side if he would hope to get his run back. Now to round out the top four on loser semifinals, we would have Yuzu Ganondorf playing as well versus Darksy playing Taki. Let's see which of these two would be joining Myros and the losers finals. Very good play. Well, if, I, if only the source made him better. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the source, the, the, source, the source is mild, it's not hot. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, no, no need to apologize. We mean, we mean it. <laughs> I'm just captivated by the game. Oh, uh, wait, look at this. Oh, nice hit, but I can really get a, yeah, a full punish. A full combo there. Duck. Oh. Um, the reason why I shouted at Duck there because that's a uh, new season 2. As well, string, and um, as soon as you see him do that little pose, muscle um, arts. always attack behind. Yeah, Oof. weapon art, <laughs> core values times two. Very good. And there you have it, Yuzu Ganondorf prevailing over Darkseid to proceed on to the losers' finals, where we would have Mydros playing Ivy versus Yuzu Ganondorf, sticking with his as well through and through, as always. Let's see which of these two will be joining Fan Lee Jr. in the Grand Finals. Shout out to the Cree. No, no one said Waldo yet, but... Made a Russell with Ivy on two bars. I mean, not two bars, one and a half bars. But the gauge is uh, quite yellow. Another 2 2 be there. Soul Charge Pop. Power of the Human Race. Now, that guard race. gauge is looking scary. Yeah, it is very, oh, very good. Geez. Good punish. Oh, oh he's going to get... Oh, well, that's just styling. That's Dude. just... Uh... Stupendous. Stupendous. Yeah, oof. The power... That... The power of reason. That damaged us so much. Like, seriously. Stupendous. Stop it. Hang on. Unlucky for Maedros, though. Yeah. That's CE. <laughs> One of the prettiest and one of the most devastating CEs in the game. But with that, Ganondorf proceeding over Mydros three games to zero to proceed on to Grand Finals and get his run back against Fan Lee Jr. Fan Lee playing Maxi, Ganondorf playing as well as always. Ganondorf would reset the bracket, winning three games to one in the first set. Let's see if he could seal the deal and take home the tournament or Fanley Jr. will be able to make the necessary adjustments. Shout out to you, Decree. Appreciate the follow. Let's check it out. There's no need for Ganon to think about that, which is quite nice. Bro. Exactly. And, 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 this, and this is a, a very key round, and it could be the final round for Ganondorf. But right, let's see what Fanley has to say about it. Yeah, you take over. I'm kicked out. You are kicked out? <laughs> And uh, finally going into his, uh, uh, sorry, finally going into his soul charge now. Um, Ganondorf with a very commanding life lead though, and that is going to be it. Ganondorf is going to take, take it. He is one locked in your character. There's no need for Ganondorf. And with the perfect, G Ganondorf demandingly winning over Fanley Jr. Three games to one in the reset to take home locked in your character number four. So to recap those top four, first place we have Yuzu Ganondorf, second place Fanley Jr., third place Majros, and in fourth Darkseid. Shout out to the commentators AA794 and Blade of Flame. 
have a link to their Discord as well as the Smash GG where you can find the entire bracket. And of course, you can find the stream on twitch.tv slash cookweave. Next up on to Tuesday, June the 9th, we have the FGC Fight Club Soul Calibur 6 tournament. It's taking place online in the PS4. They say it's in the East Coast, but it's pretty open, actually. Uh, this week, we would have 11 entrants competing over a match arena of $105.10. So with that, we're going to jump to the grand finals. On the winner's side, Airworthy Impact playing Cervantes versus Jack Salian on the loser's side playing as well as Jack Salian doing things. Two, uh, two grand finals in the same weekend. Let's see if he will be able to take one of these home. I know what's going to come there. Yeah. You think that Aswell players are generally like unga bunga players, I guess, that just come out the gate no. just swinging out? He no. Is, no, he is the only Aswell player I've ever seen that is this unga bunga. Really? A lot of them are a lot more patient. Yeah, they'll sit at like mid-range yeah. until someone whips a button. Gotcha, gotcha. And then they'll throw out a bunch of long-range moves and then move in with a lighter... Uh, in sword combination. Yeah. Listen, Lee says that this matchup is awful for Cervantes, but you know what? Cervantes is making work of Azul right now, and yo, I mean, just really dominating this, and yo, yeah. he is one match away from winning, winning. grand finals, yo. And yeah. convincingly. Convincingly well. Like, make well, well, well. Alien look yeah. like an alien. Uh. Oh, oh, yo, that he's, is he, so is he dead? Oh, he's dead. Whoa, with the <laughs> ring out, did you see that? Okay. I didn't think he was that close to the wall. Whoa. Oh, wow. And there you have it. Airworthy impact with the quick with the quick round three. Eating up the no round, you know, completing the no round brown in that one to take home FGC Fight Club. So caliber six. So Airworthy Impact first place, Jack Cillian second place, and to round out the top three, we would have Anudi. Shout out to the commentators, we would have Kazui at Kazui Kurosaki2 on Twitter and Doza X at FGC Fight Club. You can find the bracket on Matcharino. They're taking advantage of Matcharino's bracket technology currently in beta, and you can find a complete stream on twitch.tv slash FGC Fight Club. On to our next tournament, Wednesday, June the 10th, 2020, we would have Wednesday Night Fights 2020 Online Edition Episode 2 taking place online on the PC in the West US. This one would have 16 entrants competing over a match arena of $127.79. Going to cover the top four of this one. Starting off with the winners' finals. One familiar name, one name we haven't seen in a while. Broken Alliance is Zefukai playing Sophitia and Kinetic Clash. Haven't seen him in a while. Seems he's come out of his competitive hiatus for a little bit. He would start off with Taki, switch to his Ivy in game two, and switch back to Taki in game three. Let's see if, you know, he was able to figure something out or would Zephikai take this and be the first to grand finals? Oh, like that. Oh. Man, I, I wish I had a nickel for every time he 3 beat. I would have many nickels. I mean, it's not the it's not like it's a bad thing. It's like saying, don't 4K as Voldo. Yeah. Because <laughs> it, it's a safe launcher. It's really good. Nice. Rearranges. Zephkai's ribs. Boom. Oh, for that. Wow. I like that. Goes for double am goes for double amulet into Oki setup. Yeah, I love how that uh combo looks so natural. <laughs> into the, the, the wake up. It looks so natural. Like it just flows into it. How did oh he not God. get thrown there? <gasps> uh oh. Womp 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 and that is it. <laughs> Lightning is Zeus. Bop. And... <laughs> and there you go, Zephukai winning it with the CE after the reverse ledge B. 
Kinetic Clash would have to fight his fight one more round if he would hope to get his run back against Zephukai. Zephukai taking the break, sitting down, watching the rest of us mortals compete in the loser's bracket. <laughs> but to round out the top four on the loser's side, loser semifinals, we would have Manta playing. There you go. Valdo versus Faustian's Rip City Outlaw playing Siegfried. Now, this would actually be a run back from the winner's quarterfinals where Manta won two games to one. Let's see. Would it be the same outcome or would Rip City Outlaw be able to get his revenge? Let's see as this goes down to the final, final round. It's okay. All right. This is, tor this is match point. It's match point. I respect. Right, oh. Let's see if... Uh, I, I can feel it though. Rip City's gonna 4-4-B his way to victory. I can just I can feel it in my bones. He's gonna just gonna suss out that low and just rise to the occasion. Oh, Ooh. he moved! Oh no! All right, here we go. What's the blunt? Wow, he's the second he hit whip. It. It's not even a drop. You don't drop that move. It's literally a combo. I wouldn't have done rollback. <laughs> oh. <gasps> oh, he catches him with the, the pelvic region. <laughs> oh, it's okay. And there you have it. Manta and his Valdo winning again two games to one over Rip City Outlaw to proceed on to the, win the losers finals. And they're waiting for him. Kinetic Clash and his Ivy. Manta playing Valdo. Now this too. Losers finals round would go down to the final final round. Kinetic Clash fighting his way back from two games down. Would he be able to seal the deal? Let's see. You just let it rip. You're in range for it. It makes total sense. Like, wow, it caught the stat. Nine. Wow. Oh. He... <gasps> oh. Okay. Right, nice throw. Trying to mix it up a little bit. Oh wow, what a duck! Okay, soul charge. Are we going with this? Are we swimming with oh. the fishes? Alright, what's gonna happen? Okay, hubs. Oh no, he got restood. Here we go, big damage. Oh, he's gonna round juice right now. Oh my it's actually God. not a great position for Valdo. Oh, oh God. no! <gasps> no! Here comes that top player cool. damage! Oh my God, this That's is gonna dead. kill, isn't it? He's yeah, dead. He's gonna kill. Oh, oh my God. No, Wow. Incredible, man. He's actually dead. Dang, I, that left a bad taste in my mouth. I really wanted Manta to win. <laughs> Hashtag Ivy Gang. But with that, Kinetic Clash winning over Manta. Three games to two in the final, final round. Completing the reverse sweep and getting his run back against Zephukai, who, as we heard earlier, Sent him the losers in the winners finals three games to one. Let's see if Kinetic Clash would be able to learn from his journey through this tournament. He would be sticking with Ivy, Zephukai sticking with Sophitia. Let's see how it all went down. All right, Zeph is about to just he's about to take us and put us early to bed. Ooh, oh. all right. That's a good way to start a round. Nice SS. Ooh. Ow. Oh. Oh, okay. On some one case. Okay, Hyaw time. Hyaw two. Hyaw number three. Hyaw. Hyaw number four. Oh and uh, that's the round, guys. You can't do anything. <laughs> You're going to do anything. That move is so good. <laughs> And there you go, Zephukai taking full advantage of the tools that the game developers gave him. Clutching it out with the Soul Charge, Angel Step A plus B to win over Kinetic Clash in his Ivy. Taking home Wednesday Night Fights 2020 Online Edition Episode 12. So to recap those top four, first place Broken Alliance is Zephukai, second place Kinetic Clash, third place Manta, and fourth place Faustian's Rip City Outlaw. Shout out to the commentators Con Mai on Twitter at Con Mai573 and Valkyrade on Twitter at Valkyrade. Have a link to their Discord. 
can find the entire bracket on Smash GG. And you can find re- the stream on Twitch, twitch.tv slash Big Papa Chunk. And to round out our tournaments for this week, Thursday, June 11th, 2020, we got Boominati Battles Week 11. It's taking place online in the East U.S. 24 entrants here competing for a match arena of... Sorry, I usually get this beforehand. I didn't see what the final match arena was. $106.69. Nice. So, to start off the top four, another familiar name. Once again, Broken Alliance's Zephukai playing Shang Hua versus Team Deus's Ender's J playing Cervantes. This would come up. This would go down to the final game. Let's see who would win this winner's finals match. Well, like, I, I think that round actually serves as, like, at least, like, a solid foundation just, like, work with. Like, if all Yeah, it's just a matter of if it was too late, you know? <laughs> oh, no blunders, though. Good side step, yeah, just not, not getting this damage, just... Maybe a frame two off too late. Oh no! That's it. I totally makes sense. Yeah. I honestly feel like that one interaction is why Seth decided to pick this character against Ender. Yeah. Because now that's he right. can't be three, and that's game. Yep. Yeah. He right? gave him too much of a leash, and yeah. then Seth adapted immediately after losing uh, one round. So pretty solid stuff. Always very exciting to see these two guys play. Oh no! Yeah, that wholeheartedly agree. And uh. And there you have it, Broken Alliance's Zephukai taking it over Ender's J to punch his ticket to Grand Finals. Ender's J would have to win one more match if he hoped to join him. Now to round out the top four in the loser semifinals, we would have Wind Charmer playing Talon versus Team Deus's Incendiate playing Ivy. Yes, that's right. You heard it. Ivy. Hashtag Ivy Game. Do your thing. Let's get it. Which of these two would win and proceed on to the losers finals? Which of us, which of these two would be done for the day? Let's check it out. I think uh, Incendi just, just has Well, it. the command grab is scary, dude. <laughs> Very scary. Break just break it. Okay, good natural combo. Great use of the soul attack. Interesting. And Sandy, uh decided to go with the jump kick, if only because it was uh, going to potentially... And that's the game. Man. Sandy felt so comfortable. It, it, like, his gameplay led me to believe that he was 100% comfortable that entire time. I think... Uh... There you have it. Incendiate defeating Wind Charmer and proceeding on to the other loser's final spot, setting up the Team Deus Showdown. The Team Deus Classic, Enders J versus Incendiate, Cervantes versus Ivy, the real life and the canon Soul Calibur lore match. Let's see which of these two would win on this day. Would it be Daddy Cervantes or Ivy? Enders is probably going to have both bars, so Incendiate was just comfortable. Yeah, and it's gonna have to potentially deal with the lethal hit, though I doubt he's gonna get hit by that. Yep. It worked out. I, I thought he was gonna do the uh, the CE, like, natural combo, but now he keeps that meter, and it could be what he needs to take this game away from Ender's J. Possibly. It's gonna be tough. He's definitely gonna be looking for some fishy stuff here. Rising A. I oh, like the fact that Ender's isn't making it obvious that he has that lethal hit. Oh, there you go. <laughs> that was a wonderful backstep killer from Ender's J. Is that three? Endress is probably going to have both. And there you go with the soul attack and shot to the face. Enders J winning over Incendiate. Three games to one to earn his run back versus Broken Alliance's Zephukai in the grand finals. Grand finals on the winner's side. Enders J representing Team Deus on the loser's side with his Cervantes. Of course, in the winners' finals, Zephukai won three games to two, 
Would it be the same story or would this one be closer? Well, I can't get much closer than three, two. Would Enders J get his revenge and win over Zephyr Kai? Let us see. I don't actually know what he expected Zeph to do. I can't think of something that he would have done that Sidestep would have beaten. Maybe just a duck? Yeah, maybe. Yeah, I don't either. I'd say, like, uh, Zeph would be more likely to either duck, like you say, or Sidestep. 2A or AA is what I would have expected. Or maybe he was I, always, I always expect AA from a jean claude player. Or maybe he was just uh, stepping to give himself time to figure out what to do. Yeah. He's, it, Enders is definitely seeming uh, a little bit lost. Again, he's already in CE death range. And oh. I think that's it. So, we had a very, very close set uh, the last time these guys played this. Um, and we definitely had a pretty close set during Winner's Finals. But uh, Zeph definitely seems to have a handle on this now. So, it's up to Enders to try and figure out uh, how he's going to beat this uh, adaptation from... And there you have it, Zephukai saying, nah, I want to get this over with quick. 3-0, the no round brown. Zephukai over Enders J to take home. Boominati battles week 11. So to recap those top four, first place, Broken Alliance, Zephukai. Second place, Team Deus is Enders J. Third place, Team Deus is Incendiate. And in fourth, Wind Charmer. Shout out to the commentators, JJJ. On Twitter at JJJ underscore SC6 and Omega XCN on Twitter at Omega XCN. You can find the entire bracket on Smash GG and you can find, you can watch the entire tournament on twitch.tv slash Cambosa. Now we're going to take a quick break in a second, but before we do, we want to give a quick shout out to our Patreon patrons. Doug Lennington, Cassandra Hessler, Mai Mai Gomez, and the other patrons doing their thing anonymously. Thank y'all so much for continuing to support the Soul Caliber pod, the Florida Caliber podcast, and the Soul Caliber community. Just realized that my uh, just realized that my description up here is wrong again. This is the runbacks number four, taking place on June fourteenth. But thank you for my Patreon, for the Patreon patrons that have continued to support us and can support the Soul Calibur community going forward. Thank you for that follow, Eyelash Wish. If you too are willing and able to contribute to what we're doing and to help support the scene, support us as we ourselves try to support the scene, visit patreon.com slash flcaliburpod. There's no tiers, minimum of $1 a month. And these are just going towards donating to the other Maturinos, the Maturinos for the online tournaments that are going on right now as we try to keep the Soul Calibur scene alive until we get back to the online offline events. And then once the offlines do proceed, as it seems like they may be starting to pretty soon, then we'll go ahead and figure out new ways to advertise and support the Soul Calibur scene. What do you get for that? Of course, you get the shout outs during the podcast. And the first posts that I try to make to whenever we drop a new episode are on the Patreon page before Twitter, before Facebook. So for those shout outs to support the Soul Calibur scene, to support us, please check out patreon.com slash FL Caliber pod. Now we're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we're going to go over the events to come so that you know what's coming up in the near future and an update on the Florida Caliber and an update on the remnants of the Soul Caliber World Tour right after this. Hey, what's up? This is Tampa Roth, and you're listening to the Florida Caliber Podcast. And we're back. Now, before we get on to the new events to come, just going to run down the events that have happened by the time you're listening to this on the live stream or by the time a lot of you would have seen this on YouTube or on the podcast, but weren't covered in this episode. Starting off Friday, June the 12th, we had the Bud Light Beer League's West 
Regional number three is taking place online on the PC in the West US. This was, of course, a bi weekly 128 player cap. Like I said, I would run down the registration and everything, but like I said, it's already happened by the time you've heard this. To check out the entire bracket, you can go to Smash GG and to check out the stream, go to twitch.tv slash Bud Light. Saturday, June 13th, we would have Juicy Goes Online, Soul Calibur 6. It's taking place online in the PS4 in the state of Florida. We have a link to their Discord. You can find the entire bracket on Smash GG. You can find the stream, the replay of the tournament on twitch.tv slash Juicy Game Night. And then this actually taking place after we go off. Here, Sunday, June the 14th, we would have the New York Caliber Next Level Battle Circuit. That's that NLBC Online Edition number 10. It's taking place online on the PC in the East US. So a weekly tournament will have a link to their match arena with the coupon code to donate a free 50 cents. Links to their Discord. You can find that streamed live and you can catch the replay on twitch.tv slash NYC. Furby. Now, as I am morally obligated to do, we're going to start off with the events to come in the Sunshine State where souls burn brighter. That's right. I'm talking about Florida. And off top, we're going to start off with the Juicy Monthly set to take place at the Hilton Garden and at SeaWorld in Orlando, Florida. Now, this is currently postponed indefinitely but indefinitely may not be as long as you think um of course at the time it was announced that these would be postponed until we were able to continue at full capacity and seeing as other venues and things are opening up of course the uh you know the the public may be a little hesitant to come out to all of these events at for the time being, but it does seem like we are getting closer. So as soon as we get a de definite date, of course, we will give that to you. If you did register from April, I think April was the last was when it was initially postponed. So if you registered in April, May or so far in June, those registrations are being carried over until the next official tournament is a go however to check out all details they it is currently open on smash gg we'll have a link for that and will be streamed on twitch.tv slash juicy game night now i am getting word that june 18th this would be this coming thursday will be the next ukemi trap online taking place on the ps4 in North America, this host this the uh, hosted by Tamparoth and Florida Caliber, but open to North America. Smash GG not quite up yet, but as soon as it is, of course, you know I'm going to get that information out to you. I'll go ahead and tweet it out, retweet it from my personal page. Make sure that Florida Caliber tweets it or retweets that out for y'all. So if y'all want to be a part of that, keep your eyes open on Smash GG and on the social medias. Ukimi Trap Online, June 18th. And later in the year, Saturday and Sunday, November 7th and the 8th, we got the Gamers on the Edge for the Kids 2020. 20, huh, let's try that again. Saturday and Sunday. November 7th and the 8th, we got the Gamers on the Edge for the Kids 2020 Charity Pro-Am sponsored by More TV, taking place at the Holiday Inn Tampa West Shore in Tampa, Florida. This is an annual event. This is actually going to be a mashup of two events that they have, the Charity Pro-Am and the 24-Hour game Athon, all going down at the Holiday Inn Tampa West Shore. With that, it's going to be a 24-hour venue all day and all night come on and get your game on venue fee is going to be 25 dollars through october the 18th 35 dollars from october 19th to the 31st with online registration to be determined attorney fee is going to be 10 dollars, and there's also going to be a spectator fee of 10 dollars 
for those that just want to come out, not necessarily compete in the tournament, but still want to get your game on and support what they're doing and support your favorite competitors and get you access to the venue all weekend long. And all pro all proceeds from the venue's fees will go to benefit the All Children's Hospital. We'll have a link to their Smash GG. And you can find it streamed on Twitch at twitch.tv slash gamers on the edge. Now over to the UK and the EU. Saturday, June 20th, we have Locked in Your Character number five taking place online on the PS4 in the UK and the EU. This is a weekly tournament. They took a week off because Cook, we've had some personal matters to attend to, but we will be back on June 20th. We'll have a link to the match Reno. Registration ends at 12 p.m. British summertime, 1 p.m. Central European time. Bracket beginning at 2 p.m. British summertime, 3 p.m. Central European time. We'll have a link to their Discord. For more information, you can check out Smash GG. And you can find it streamed on twitch.tv slash cookweave. Now over to the U.S. and North America. Monday, June 15th, we would have the Road to First Attack online edition. It's taking place online in the PS4. Open to Puerto Rico, the Dominican Republic, Panama, and the Southeast U.S. That's from Florida to Virginia. Now, it appears that the registration is already over. If y'all didn't already register for it, this taking place tomorrow. Had a venue fee of $5 and an entry fee of $5. However, we do still have a link to their match Reno with the code RTFASC6 to donate a free 50 cents. That will be in the Google Doc that will be accompanying this episode. We also have a link to their Discord for more information you can check out smash gg and you can find it streamed on twitch.tv slash first attack pr next up saturday june 20th we would have colorado's soul caliber 6 online monthly it's taking place online in the ps4 and the pc ps4 will be exclusive to colorado and the surrounding areas pc open for all now, this is Colorado's monthly tournament. There will be a match arena for each tournament for the PS4 registration ending at 11 a.m. Mountain Time, bracket beginning at noon Mountain Time. On the PC, registration ending at 3 p.m. Mountain Time, bracket beginning at 4. Have a link to their Smash GG or you can find them on Smash GG for more information and to register. And you can watch the stream on twitch.tv slash evil boo Then to round up our last regular tournament, Friday, June the 19th, we have Bud Light Beer League Soul Calibur East number three taking place online on the PC in the East US. We went through most of the details earlier, bi-weekly, 128 player cap. This one important to note, registration begins at 6... Registration begins day of 3.01 a.m. Eastern Time. It's actually 12.01 p.m., a minute after midnight on the west side, but 3.01 a.m. on the east side. Registration closes 6 p.m. Eastern Daylight Savings Time. Bracket starts at 7. Another important note, no custom outfits or recolors. All customs are banned. Got to use what the game developers gave you. Be competing over the prize pool of $1,000. First place earning $500. Second place earning $300. Third place earning $200. And the top 12 will be earning points towards qualifying for the regional round robin where an even bigger price, pi- price pool, an even bigger price pool is up for the taking. Have a link to their Smash GG to register when the time comes and for all the details. Also remember, small note, but it's still a note. Must be 21 or older to compete in the Bud Light Beer Leagues. And to catch all the action, you can go to twitch.tv slash Bud Light. Now, now to wrap things up, before we get on out of here, going to go through the formerly known as Soul Calibur World Tour events. Starting off, we have BAM 
12, Battle Arena Melbourne 12, set to take place at the Melbourne Conference and Exhibition Center in Melbourne, Victoria, Australia. Now, I reached out to them, haven't heard back from them yet, but per their Facebook, the date for BAM 12 has been changed to May 21st and May 23rd, 2021. So there is a chance that it's starting to look like 2020 may be scrapped, even though there hasn't been any official announcement yet. But as soon as I hear or as soon as I see anything on social media, of course, I will be quick to retweet that and get that out there to y'all so that you know for anybody that was planning on going to BAM 12 this year. Also, also to uh, corroborate that, Currently on their Smash GG, they're not taking any new registrations. So it looks like it may be a wrap for 2020. We're still waiting for the official word. But to check for yourself, you can go to the Smash GG at Smash GG slash BAM12. Or you can go to their website, CouchWarriors.org. Or follow them on Twitter at CouchWarriors. Now, next up. September 5th and the 6th, Saturday and Sunday. This, the date that was previously confirmed for Rev Major taking place last year at the Tent at Soleil Resort and Casino in Metro Manila in the Philippines. Now, as stated, this date was confirmed earlier in the year on Facebook and Twitter as part of the reveal for the Tekken World Tour 2020. But of course, we know that's no longer going on and we haven't had any other updates or details in a while. Um, there's no Smash GG, so you can't register for it. I also sent a message to them, I believe on Twitter, might have been on Facebook, but I did reach out to them waiting to hear what the latest is on Rev Major, see if this is still going on. Because if so, if not, you know, we can go ahead and get the word out, clear it out, you know, and just start prepping for next year. But to check for yourself... You can visit their website, revmajor.playbookph.com. You can follow them on Twitter at revmajor and find them, or sorry, Twitter. Find them on Twitter at revmajorph. And you can find them on Facebook, facebook.com slash revmajorph. Next up, normally taking place sometime in October. We have almost no information for this one. Ultimate Fighting Arena taking place last year at Le Doc de Paris in Paris, France. Like I said, we have very few updates at all in 2020. Uh, sent a message to them as well. Actually, I believe I sent them a tweet directly on Twitter as their DMs weren't open. Waiting to hear back from them. Haven't heard anything yet. But to check out last year and to see how that went down and get an idea for how they do things, you can go to their website ufa.gg or follow them on twitter at ufa underscore gaming and to wrap things up friday through sunday december 11th through the 13th we would have our hometown major my hometown major community effort orlando ceo 2020 taking place at the wyndham orlando resort in the city beautiful orlando florida now, this year, we would have a 5,000 attendee cap as it is in a smaller venue than previous years. Last year had over 11,000 attendees over the last three days. So smaller venue means fewer attendees, unfortunately. However, if you do plan on coming out, venue fee is going to be $75 until further notice with no on-site registration. Turning fee of $10 per game. For all the details... You can go to Smash GG slash CEO 2020, or you can check out their website, CEOgaming.org, or follow them on Twitter at CEO Gaming. And even though the Soul Calibur World Tour is no longer a thing offline for this year, they did say that they would have some information coming regarding an online event. And to get the first word on all of that, you can check out the website for the Soul Calibur World Tour at on the web, scworldtour.com. 
that said i'd like to thank y'all for listening to listening and watching this episode of the run back big shout out to zerk for allowing us to use his song fgc from his game life ep to check out the entire ep or the whole song go to soundcloud.com slash the zerk it's t-h-e-e-z-e-r-k any likes shares retweets on all our social medias you can follow us on twitch here so that you're notified every time we go live you can subscribe on youtube so that you get the heads up every time a new video drops if you're not able to watch us live and of course you can always listen to us in the audio only version the traditional podcast of which i am so fond of go to flcaliberpod.com for links on all your favorite podcast apps if you really like the podcast and want to support what we're doing visit us on patreon.com slash flcaliberpod no tears you can pledge as little as one dollar a month to help us stay on the tracks and keep things moving and donating to the other tournaments to you know support the soul caliber community give everyone something to keep fighting for until we get back to the offline events for all things florida caliber podcast you can check out the website flcaliberpod.com you can follow our social medias on twitter ig on twitch anywhere you can find us at fl caliber pod you can find the florida caliber community on twitter and facebook and on discord we'll have links throughout for the discords and at fl caliber i do have it jerry b i just haven't had the opportunity to get it but i i do have it and i will have that for the next stream just so y'all can see the beautiful artwork that she had commissioned for us and see uh just what the florida caliber community has in store for you you can follow me on my social medias on twitter ig and twitch at ray draconis that's r-e-y d-r-e-c-o-n-u-s there we go. That said, thank you for watching this episode of the Florida Caliber Podcast. This is Ray Dre Conus. Holla at your boy. FGC, we savage, like, man, you don't understand. If you hating on this track, then you can get that ass banned.